Hey, everybody. Welcome to our course on Google Docs. My name is Elissa Smith. I am a software applications facilitator with over 20 years of experience, and I'm excited to guide you on this tour of the Google Docs application. It's a great processing application for creating documents. We're going to check out ways to really help make your journey in Google Docs easier and smoother with shortcuts and ways to make some fantastic looking documents. Now, as always, if you're enjoying these videos, please like and subscribe. If you're looking to earn certifications and watch videos without ads, you can sign up for our Learn at Any Time. It's a dedicated online learning subscription service. Check the link in the description for more information. And as always, if you have questions you want answered by one of our awesome instructors, please join our offsite community. The link is down in our description as well. And as always, this course may have exercise files. If it does, you can find them in the video description below too. So join us on our Google Docs journey. Hi, we're ready to actually create a new blank document inside of Google Docs. So right here, I'm on the getting started screen of the Google Docs web application. I'm using a Windows PC. There are also Windows Doc apps for both Android and iPhone. But for this session, we're going to be in the Google Docs web app. Now, remember, I'm still in Google web apps. I can see that because in the top right hand corner, I'm logged into my Google Apps account. And also we've got the waffle. Google actually refers to it as the application launcher, but either way, this is your access to your other apps within your Google account. Now to start a new blank document, you'll see here there is the blank icon, but notice that there are also some pre-made templates that you can use to create basic documents. And also right here, you've got a search where you can go through the entire Google Docs library of apps. This is similar to what Microsoft Word has, but for us, we want to start with a new blank document. So I'm going to click on that. Now it opens up and I'm now inside a new blank file inside of Google Apps. And you can see here, or I should say Google Docs, that there are a few common things that you're gonna see in the interface. First of all, right now I'm in an untitled document. You can see that's where I can go up to name my document, which we'll do in just a second. Then you have this default toolbar. It's kind of fun that uh, Google's going back to having this toolbar. Keep in mind, these are the most popular buttons. They consider these the ones to be that you'll be clicking on the most. Now, above that, you have drop down menus. These are really retro. When you click on these, you'll see that there are different options. So let's just take a minute and go through some of these. File is going to allow you to do things like open, print, and also make copies, rename the file. Under edit, you're gonna have the things like undo and redo, who are also located here on the toolbar, and then cut, copy, paste, find and replace. The view drop down menu is all about how you're viewing your Google Doc. This allows you to do things like turn the ruler on and off. And then we have the insert menu. This is where you can bring in images, tables, charts. We'll look at some of these later on. The format ribbon is all about basic formatting, but does include some important options like bringing in headers and footers, also updating your page orientation. The tools menu is going to give you spell check, also word count, and even a translation tool. The add-ons is about bringing other applications into Google Docs. And then of course, the good old help menu. Now in the top right hand corner, you're gonna see you have an option to actually collapse the toolbar so that you don't see the menus that are up above it, or you can open that up. And then also options to share a file that you're in, or additionally, also to present it to a meeting or even leave comments. Now we need to actually save this file so that we can start using it. So right here, I'm gonna come in and give it a name. It's going to be saved to my Google Drive by default because everything saves in the cloud. You can see that after I typed in the name, it told me it was saved to my Google Drive. So again, we want you to try it out, open up Google Docs, try opening up a blank document and join us for another journey soon. Welcome back. We're ready to take a new blank Google document that we have just created, make sure that we know where it's being saved and also where we can get help within the Google Docs application. Now here in Google Docs, I just have a new blank file opened up. Again, remember if you go to file, you can actually come down to new and select to open up a new blank document. And this automatically takes you to a new blank untitled document, which is just what we want. Now that I'm here, I'd like to spend a little bit of time 
getting some ideas of how I can get help when I have a question within the Google Docs web application. Up here, you'll see that there is a help menu. When you click on help, notice at the very top, there is a search option. This is a great place to go when you just don't know how to do something. Like for example, how do I print a Google Doc item? When I type in print, you'll see that it is similar to other word processing applications, but it also just takes me to the item rather than telling me how to do it. So this took me to the print uh, preview window where I can actually print my document. So the other options that you have in the help menu, you'll see as you come down at the very bottom, there are keyboard shortcuts. These are going to be specific to Google Docs, but you'll notice that some of them are familiar. Most applications use Control B for their keyboard shortcuts. You also see as you scroll down that there are some other ones that you can go through to help you get up to speed with, again, Google Docs. So when it comes to getting help, we really suggest that you come up and use the help menu because you'll see both a search for help and also an option to open up the Docs help. This just opens up a separate window where you can actually do your search within Google Docs. But remember that some of it is actually gonna take you to the item and other parts are actually gonna take you to the steps depending on how you do your search. Now we definitely would like you to try this out. So open up a new blank document and go ahead and try going into the help menu and explore some different topics that you're interested in learning about. Hi, we're ready to do some navigation and also do some data entry inside of our Google Docs document. Again, we'd love to have you try this out. So in our exercise files folder, there is a file called travel seminar dash one, pop it open, and then you'll have one that you can play with as well. A couple of tips when it comes to navigating in Google Docs, you can use your scroll bars on the right hand side to scroll up and down. Also, if you're on a mouse that has a scroll wheel, it does the same thing. A couple of great shortcuts that are available in many Windows devices, control home, the control button with the home key, which is usually located by your page up button, will always take you to the top of the document. And if you notice right beneath that or to the side of it on your keyboard, an end key, E-N-D, control end will always take you to the very end. These are two great toggles, control home and end, to jump between the top and bottom of most documents. And they also work in other applications. Now, when it comes to data entry, it's very similar to other word processing applications. I want to click where I want to type. And as soon as I click, I'll see my cursor blinking there. And then I can, of course, start typing on my keyboard. And as soon as I type, it will actually enter in the text that I am going to be, of course, selecting. Now, when it comes to things like replacing text, Right here, you'll notice, for example, maybe I need a different name. I can double click on a word that will select it. And then I can type over the top and it will replace it with my new text. This is very common typing and editing like you would see in other applications like Microsoft Word or even good old WordPerfect from way back when. Now, if I need to insert new text, I'm going to go ahead and click next to the text where I would like to insert. And then I'm going to type in my new text and it will be entered into the document where I'm typing. Again, we want you to try this out, so go for it. Hey, welcome back. I wanna show you one of my favorite features in Google Docs. Because this is, an, again, open in a web browser, it really gives us a lot of utility. What if you're not a typing fan? One of the greatest things that's coming to the internet is the ability to do voice to type. This is where you just talk and it types it for you. So the first step is to actually click in your document where you want this to go. I'm just gonna come right here at the end of this paragraph and click right here. Then to turn on the voice to type, I'm gonna come up to the tools drop down menu inside of Google Docs, and I'm going to come down to voice typing. Now it's strongly suggested you have a microphone installed on your computer for this to work really well. So I'm gonna select voice typing, then you'll notice here that I see this little microphone box. Now, a couple things unique with this, you can move it around on your screen. Additionally, also, you can actually click right here and it does several different languages. You can see that English is of course the default, but of course it's Google, so they support a lot of other languages. When I'm ready to start actually having my words be transcribed in the document, I'm gonna go back here again and click where I want it to go. I'm going to click on the microphone and then start talking and it's going to record everything I'm saying. 
This new internet system application will allow users to control their own information and update their account automatically, period. You click on it to turn it off. Now I can turn it back on at any time, but notice the portion that I wanted has been added to the document. You can also do things like new line. We will also get to hear from the president of the organization as well, period. Things like new line and period will actually allow it to put a new line into the document and also add punctuation. It's a really cool utility. And when I'm done using this voice to type, I can just come right here and click on the X and close it and it will turn off. And as always, Google Docs is saving everything I'm doing as I go. Now we want you to try this out. So go to the exercise files, open up Travel Seminar 2 and try using the voice to text feature yourself. Hey, let's look at some paragraph and line spacing inside of Google Docs. So right now I'm in my file and if I have a paragraph, I can just click and have my cursor blinking in that paragraph and it will automatically adjust the line spacing or paragraph spacing for that entire paragraph. So I'm gonna come up to the toolbar or I should say, yeah, the toolbar and come over to the right hand side to the line and paragraph spacing button. This gives me some basic, again, line spacing options like single or double. Notice at the bottom, I also have options like keep with next. This is if lines get separated across page breaks. And you'll notice right here, prevent single lines is automatically turned on. I can also just come in and click for one and a half by doing 1.5. And you can see how this is adjusting it. Now, if I would like to do some custom line spacing, I can come right here to custom spacing and it provides me with a custom spacing box where I can see the line spacing and then I can decide a certain number of points that I'd like before and after a paragraph. For example, I could change this to having six points of space before and after my paragraphs. You'll notice that this might adjust the paragraph just a little bit. Now, when it comes to the alignment of my paragraphs, I have the good old basics. Left is the default, then I have center, right, and justified. So if I want to take a paragraph and have it be right aligned, I can come here by just having my cursor clicked in the paragraph. I can click and you'll notice that it will shove everything over at the right hand side. Remember that justified means that it's trying to have equal spacing between both sides of the page. A lot of text is printed this way because sometimes when you have a left alignment, it leaves a lot of empty space over here on the right hand side of the page. But these are not something new and a lot of other word processing applications use very similar buttons. So again, we want you to try it out in the exercise files folder, open up travel seminar two and try doing some of your own paragraph spacing and also alignments in that file. Welcome back. We're ready to look at how you can do indenting inside of your paragraphs and also tab stops. I want to start by just seeing that when I go to a paragraph, I can indent the first line of a paragraph by hitting my tab key. And I'll see that as I hit tab, my paragraph will move over by half an inch. This is the default. You can see that happen. Now, if I undo that, it'll take me back to where I started. Again, good opportunity to use the undo button. What if you would like to adjust those on your own? For example, you would like the top line of your paragraph to be an inch in. Notice up here in the ruler, and again, if your rulers aren't turned on, make sure you go to the view dropdown menu and put a check mark next to show ruler. If you uncheck it again, it will turn it off. So make sure it's turned on because that's where you're going to see these two options. You'll see that there is an upside down blue arrow. This is for your left indent. And then you'll also see that there is a bar above the top of it that's blue. And this is called the first line indent. Also over on the right hand side of the ruler, you will see your right indent. Now in a paragraph, by default, you can come up to those little arrows in the bar and you can actually drag them together and what you'll see if is if I drag this over to one inch, it will tell me, and when I release my mouse, because I've dragged both the arrow and the bar together, all the lines of my paragraph will adjust. Now I'm going to undo that because I just want the top line to adjust. In that case, I'm going to come to the bar and just drag the bar over to the one inch mark. Notice how it shows me when it gets there. I'm going to release my mouse and notice just the very top line of my paragraph has adjusted. Now if I'm going to undo that again, 
And you can do control Z, by the way, in Google Docs, and it will undo what you've just done. If I have several paragraphs that I would like to adjust for, I can actually highlight all those paragraphs with my mouse. Then I can come in and go to that, again, top bar for the first line indent, just left drag it, and notice that in all of my paragraphs, any paragraph, just the first line will adjust. I'm going to undo that because I just want to do it actually to this paragraph right here. So I'm just going to drag over the one. Now, what about the right hand side? I can also adjust the margins of the right hand side by coming to the right indent. This is the one at the right hand side. And again, the arrow also points down. I'm going to drag it in about an inch and I'll see that just for that one paragraph, again, it's changing the indent for the line or paragraph that I'm on. We'd love to have you try this out. So in the exercise files, go in and look for Travel Seminar Dash 3 and give it a whirl. Hi, we're ready to actually look at bulleted and numbered lists inside of Google Docs. Now, right now I have my board meeting document open. And as always, we'd love to have you try this out with us. So go to the exercise files folder, open up board meeting dash one, and you can try it out with me. Now, the first thing I want to look at is to explore different options. I do have in this board meeting document, or I should say Google Doc, I have a list of items. You will see that each of these lists is separated with an enter to put it on a separate line. This is a great opportunity to create a bulleted list. And Google Docs has some nice, simple ways to do this. So I'm going to come in and select the, again, lines that I want to make into bullets and then come up to the toolbar. On the right hand side, I have the bulleted lists button, which if I click on it, it just does the good old solid filled in black bullet. Nice and simple. Now, a couple of tricks. Let's say, for example, that I have this first bullet and underneath of it, I need a sub bullet. When I hit enter, it's going to create a second bullet. But if I hit tab, you'll see that I get a sub bullet. So you see here that I'm creating the sub bullet underneath of that. Now, another great tool is what if you need a second line, but not a bullet? In that case, a really great keyboard shortcut is to do shift with the enter key. This allows you to get a new line, but it's still actually part of the same paragraph so that you can type underneath. So this is not another bullet. It's actually part of the bullet above, but it's on a separate line. And I could create another new line by doing shift enter again. Now, what about other styles of bullets? I'm going to select my bulleted list and come back up to the toolbar. Next to the bullets button, you will see again a sub arrow. This will actually let me select different styles where I can have stars with sub bullets, or I can also have, for example, the good old arrows. It's a little bit simpler than some applications, but it keeps it easy. Now, additionally, I also have a checklist option. This is great if you're trying to create a physical list of items people need to complete. It basically gives you check boxes and you can actually click on them. And not only does it create the check mark, it also strikes out the text next to it. These are great when you're trying to give a to-do list to yourself or others that you're trying to document. Also, you have numbered lists. For this one, I'm going to come over to the one, two, three. This will give me the good old one, two, three with ABC's lowercase for my sub bullets. But notice again, I have a few different styles. I can also do numbers with a parenthesis, or I can also do Roman numerals with capital numbers. So lots of great options when it comes to being able to create a bulleted or numbered list to help add again, easy readability to your Google Doc. Try it out. Welcome back. We're ready to actually copy some information in our Google Doc to create, again, a duplicate. Now, you may have done this in other applications. It's a very similar in Google Docs. The first step is to get your text selected. I'm going to go ahead and left drag over my text. Another trick you can use, though, is to actually click on one side of the text, hold down your shift key, and then click on the other end, and everything between the two points will be selected. 
Also in a paragraph, you can triple click and that will also highlight all your text. Now, how do we copy? Notice over here on the right, we actually have some opportunities to add comments or suggest edits. But in this case, we're trying to actually copy. If you're on a PC, you can actually right click and you'll get a copy option here. Also, if you go up to the edit menu and the drop down menus, you'll see that copy is additionally there, along with a reminder on the right that control C will allow us to copy. So let's give it a try. I'm going to actually do control C and we don't see it, but the text has been copied. All right. Now, how am I going to put it somewhere? Well, I actually want to open up a new Google Doc and put it in a new blank file. So for that, after it's been copied, I'm going to come up to my file ribbon. I'm going to go to new. And of course, I want a new document. I get a new blank file. And then to paste it in, I'm going to right click. And let us I can either do paste here. I can go to my edit menu and I can do paste there. Or I can do control V and it will paste it in. So even if I'm going to a new blank document, it will allow me to paste this information in. Now, how do I get back to my original file where I copied the data? I'm going to come right here and move back to my board meeting tab, and it will take me back to my first document. So each of my Google Docs will open in their own separate browser tab. And if I want to get back to the new untitled document, I just click on the browser tab and it will take me to it. So really copying and pasting data is still very similar to how it is in other applications. Again, open up the exercise files folder, check out again, board meeting dash one and try copying and pasting some of the information in that particular file. Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm ready to look at how I can move information or cut. This is again, something that we've done in other applications like email and other word processing programs. But in Google Docs, it works in a very similar way. And when we say cut, we actually mean move. And I think move is a better way to put it. The first step though, is to get the content that you want to move selected. Now I am in the board meeting document and in our exercise files folder, if you go and open up board meeting dash one, you can try it out. So do it. The first step though, is to get everything highlighted. I'm gonna go ahead and just left drag over everything that I wanna highlight. It includes this paragraph and the table at the bottom. Now, a couple of options when it comes to moving. I can go up to the edit drop down menu and select cut. Notice the pair of scissors. There's also the, again, control X, which is the keyboard shortcut. Or if you're on a PC, you can also right click and do cut and you left click on the word. Now it will remove it from the document because we're moving it, remember? Now in this case, I actually want to put it in a new blank Google Doc. So I'm again gonna come up to the file ribbon tab and go to new and pick document. It opens up another new blank tab. And then again to paste, I can either right click and say paste. Notice this gives me choices whether I paste it without formatting or whether it will come formatted. I can also do control V on my keyboard and it will paste everything into my new Google doc. Now, if I go back to the tab for my original board meeting document, I'll see that that information has been removed out of it because I just pasted it out. As always, you can undo it, but just remember that moving is really cutting and there are a lot of great options for that either up in the toolbar or by using those shortcut keys like control X or by right clicking, try it out. Hey everybody, I wanna take a minute and focus on a topic that can save you a lot of time and that is using keyboard shortcuts. Now I know some people are not convinced but especially in a word processing application, always relying on your mouse to click up in menus and select things can really take a lot of time. The other nice thing about keyboard shortcuts is many of these are universal, especially when you're working on a Windows PC, which we are. So let's look at some old reliables and also some new ones. Now, first of all, there is a nice list of keyboard shortcuts available in Google Docs. All you need to do to open it up if you're on a PC is just to hit the keyboard keys control forward slash, and it will actually open up the list. Now, if you don't remember the keyboard shortcut, the other way to open up this keyboard shortcuts list is to go up to the help ribbon. It's a drop down menu item actually, and come all the way to the bottom and you'll see that it gives you the keyboard shortcut right here. 
This is just a list of the primary keyboard shortcuts available through Google Docs. And notice some of these are the same as other word processing applications like Control B for bold, Control I for italics. So let's try a few of these. First of all, I'm going to go ahead and just select a specific word by double clicking on it and then do Control B on my keyboard. That will put it in bold. If I'd like to underline something, I can select it and then do Control U for underline. Those are pretty common. Now, what about if I'd like to do a center alignment? I'm going to select the text and then on my keyboard, I'm gonna go ahead and do Control Shift with the letter E and that will center it. I don't know why they use an E, but they do. There are other really common ones that can be useful. For example, I'd like to select all the text and content in my document. I can do that with a control A. That will highlight everything. And then for example, it would be really easy for me to come in and pick a different font style and update all the fonts in my document. Also, some other ones that can be useful would be applying different text styles. These are a combination. For these, I can highlight text. And for example, say I would like a different text style, I can actually come up and do Control Alt with the one key. This changes my text to the heading one style that I can see here. And do remember that you always have Control Z, that's your undo button, that one's really important. So again, we'd love to have you try out some of these keyboard shortcuts that we've mentioned and also open up the keyboard shortcuts list. Remember, you can always try this out by going to the exercise files folder and we have Anila's report dash one in there that you can try out some of the different keyboard shortcuts on your own. Welcome back. I wanna show you a way that you can actually paste information into Google Docs after you've copied it, but not have the formatting come with it. Every once in a while, you may need to actually take just the text and not the formatting. Now, this document is called a uh, company description. And as always, if you want to try this out with us, go to the exercise files and look for company description dash one, and you can try it out. Now, a couple of interesting things about this document. The title up here at the top, if I come up to the toolbar and look, I will see that it has a style applied to it called title. Also, if I come down to about the third paragraph of text, I'll see this also has a style applied to it. And a style is a combination of fonts and formatting that allow you to create consistent uh, formatting throughout your document. Now, in this case, I actually wanna copy all the text but I do not wanna to have to bring any of the formatting with it. Well, in Google Docs, there's a way to paste in information and not bring the formatting. It's kind of like leaving the baggage at home. So we're gonna use a couple of great keyboard shortcuts here as well. The first one is the select all keyboard shortcut, which is control A. This is a common one. It's the select all keyboard shortcut. And then again, we're gonna do control C for copy. Those are two to always keep in your toolkit because you're gonna use them everywhere. Now I wanna open up another new blank Google Doc. So I'm gonna come up to the file ribbon tab, go to new and pick document. Now I'm in my new blank document. Now here's the tricky thing. If I just right click and paste, or if I do control V, it will paste in the copied information, but it will include formatting. Notice if I right click, it shows me that I can paste without formatting by doing a keyboard shortcut of Control Shift V. So let's give it a try. On your keyboard, do Control Shift V. We do get the text, but notice now if I look at those two particular paragraphs that I already pointed out, you're gonna see that they are both now just up in the toolbar, normal text. And this is what I was going for. I've also opened up a new untitled document. So if you wanna keep it, you'd need to go up and give it a name. Let's do that. So right here above the file, again, drop down menu, I see it says untitled. I'm gonna go ahead and call this company description without formatting. And then I'm gonna hit my enter key and it's automatically gonna be saved to my Google Drive. So just know that when you copy and paste, you do have some options to not have to bring the formatting, AKA the baggage with you when you paste it in. Thanks again for the watching. Welcome back. We're ready to focus on selecting text inside of Google Docs. 
Now, unfortunately, we are all connected to this amazing left drag thing that we do in Google Docs. I call it a bad dance step. We highlight everything or select it by left dragging over with our mouse. And this is great, but sometimes it can be inaccurate and it also takes a lot of time. So there are some great keyboard shortcuts that can help you when it comes to selecting text. Now, a few of these you've probably used in other applications. If you come to a word and double click, it will select just that word. If you come to a paragraph, and remember that a paragraph is any text that is continual without an enter at the end of it, and you triple click one, two, three, it selects that paragraph. So just one, two, three. Another great one though, that's also useful is say you're on a specific line of text and you just want to select from that line of text to the end, you can do shift end as in the E-N-D end button that's next to page down, and it will just select from that point to that point to the end of that specific line of text. Or you can do shift home, and it will actually select everything from that point to the left. Now, another one that I'm a big fan of is, let's say, for example, I need to select everything from this point up inside of my document, my Google Doc. I can do control shift home. This allows me to select everything from that point forward. And remember the home key is directly to the left of the page up button. Now I can do the exact opposite and select everything from the point where I'm clicked until the end of the document by doing control shift end as in E-N-D. Notice it's selected everything from the point that I selected down in the document. And this one's pretty long. So it takes a little while to scroll up to actually show you that that's what happened. And always to deselect text, you just click. Now, as of right now in Google Docs, you cannot actually select non-adjacent blocks of text. That is one of the downsides because in other word processing apps, you can select one chunk of text and then use your control key to select another. But as of this point in time, Google Docs doesn't support that functionality. But one great thing you can do is select a group of text then hold down your shift key and continue to click. And as you click, it will extend your selection. Or if you click up where you have already extended the selection, you can actually turn it off. And this is another great way to help make, um, again, the use of your keyboard and mouse more useful when it comes to highlighting text. Hey, thanks for joining us. Remember in the exercise files location or folder, there is a doc in there called work proposal dash one. Open it up and try selecting some of the text with these different shortcuts. Hey everybody, I'm ready to look at a way to translate an existing document into another language. We live in a world today where companies are geographically diverse. They're, they're all over the globe. So this tool can be really helpful if you don't already have a second language in your toolkit. And it's something that I think is very useful. Uh, Google is now translating up to 100 languages with their translation tool. So it makes sense that Google Docs would do something very similar. Same company, right? So here I have this piece of information about an annual or year-end meeting for the company. I want to come in and actually translate this into a different language. So for this, what I want to do is actually come up to the tools menu and under the tools menu, I'm going to come down about fifth from the bottom to translate document. Now at this point, it opens up a box and it asks me, you know, where I would like to put the new translated document because it's going to translate the entire thing. So you'll see here, it's going to create a new document titled copy of the year end meeting file. So I'm gonna go ahead and select a different language. I can actually start typing in, but you'll see here that there are many different languages that I can pick from. I'm gonna pick Spanish and then click on translate. And you'll see that in a new browser tab, it opens up my new copy now in Spanish of my document. Let's do it one more time. I'm gonna move back to the year end meeting again. I'm gonna to go to the tools drop down menu. I'm gonna come down to translate document. Again, it's gonna put it in a new tab. I'm gonna rename it so I get a different copy. This time I'm gonna do, let's say for example, Bengali, and then I'm gonna click on translate. Now, as always, these translations can be a little bit lacking. Sometimes people will say they're quite formal in nature, but it's a lot better than trying to do it myself for sure. So we'd love you to have you try this out. So go into the exercise files folder, open up the file called year end, a meeting dash one and give it a whirl.
Hey, welcome back. I want to take a minute and focus on a really easy topic, but because we're working with a web application, it's a little bit different than if you actually have a file open in natively or desktop installed software. Remember, Google Apps is all running in a web browser and everything is saving as you go, so it's a little bit different. First of all, how do we open up a new blank file so we can start working with it. I actually have a current file open in Google Docs, but a great shortcut to get into a new file or to have a file based on a template is to actually come up here directly to the left-hand side of the file drop-down menu. You're gonna see right here the Docs Home button. This will take you and actually return you to the starting page for Google Docs. This is where you can search for an existing template, a file you've already worked on, you can see all these different files we've had open. Or again, you can come and just go with a new blank document. And that's actually what I'm gonna do. Now when my new blank document opens, notice it's always called untitled document because I have not yet saved it. I'm actually gonna paste some information into this document from an email, and then I wanna go ahead and give it a name. So up here where it says untitled document, I'm gonna click right there and go ahead and give this a name. I'm just gonna call it travel description. Now what's interesting is if you take note right here on the right hand side, it tells me where this file is currently being saved. It's called My Drive. And notice if I click on it, it takes me into a list of all the different content that I have saved in this folder. This is actually saving it to my Google Docs location. My Google Drive is actually what I should say. And this is the default save location for everything to do with Google Docs. It automatically saves any of your new files there. You can create folders. In fact, down here, you'll notice the new folder button. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and create my new folder that I'm just gonna call Travel Descriptions. And the thing we need to understand about Google Drive is that it is a cloud storage tool that comes with your Google account. You do have a limited amount of space that is free. And now that I've actually created the folder, I'm just gonna say move here, which means my new travel description file has been moved into the travel description folder inside of my drive, which is really my own drive of Google Docs or other content inside of Google Drive. So it's a different way of working, but the benefit of having things saved in Google Drive is no matter where I go, those files are gonna go with me because all I need to do to access them is have an internet connection and a web browser, log into my Google account, and all my content is there. It's really a great way to work. Cloud storage is the future and it's here right now. Hi, I wanna look at how I can open up an existing Google Docs file from my drive or my Google Drive. So for that, I'm gonna come up to the File drop-down menu and come down to Open. Notice again, I could also do Control-O. It'll take me to the same place. That's not a new shortcut. Now, when I come into the Open a File dialog box for Google Docs, you'll see at the top, there are different, uh, again, areas that I can look through. My Drive is going to be the default directory for my Google Drive. And then I have Shared With Me. These would be any files that someone else through a Google account has shared with me. Start are gonna be files that I've favorited. Then of course, recent files that I've worked on. And then of course, to upload something locally from my device into my Google Drive. Now in this case, my drive is where I wanna go. And then to find the file, I'm just gonna scroll down and notice that I have my different folders here that I can see at the top. Also right here, I can do a search. On the right, I can actually change this view. Right now I'm in the list view. I can actually go to a grid view where the different files are going to look like cards. And I can also change the sort order. Right now I have mine based on the last time a file was modified, but I can change that to be sorted by name. And I also prefer the, the list view because I find it's a little bit easier to see the names of the files. And notice they are alphabetized, but folders are always gonna be above everything else. Now, once I find the item that I'm looking for, all I need to do to open it up is select it, and I can either double click or click on open, and it opens up for me right inside of Google Docs. Notice it opens in its own separate browser tab so that the other Google Docs file that I had open is also still open, so it doesn't close it. And the important thing to remember is that now that it's open, 
if I do come in, for example, and select text and maybe increase uh, font size, make changes to the file, notice up here, I don't know if you just saw that, so let me make one more change. Maybe I'm gonna actually change my font color that it will say saving in the top left-hand corner, and then it will say saved to drive. And that's to let me know that everything I'm doing is saving as I go. Now, as always, we'd love to have you try this out. So open up one of the files in the exercise files location, try to make some changes to it, then see how it auto saves. And then also go in and try to open up another Google Docs file while you're in an existing file just to see how easy it is. It's gonna be a little bit different than what you may be used to, but again, the ease of Google Docs is what I love about it. I think you'll, you'll get it pretty quickly. Try it out. So I want to show you this really cool trick that Google Docs does when it comes to making an exact duplicate or copy of an entire file. This is something that is really easy to do in File Explorer if you have a file saved locally on a Windows computer. But here with Google Docs, everything is stored in my Google Drive. So it makes it a little bit, you know, different but I can actually do it from within the Google Docs application itself. So right here I have open a document and in the exercise files folder, if you go in there and open up work proposal A, you can go ahead and give this a try as well. But what I wanna do is make a copy of this and put it in a different folder within my Google Drive. So what I'm gonna do is come up to the file drop down menu and about fourth from the top, I have this great option that says make a copy and it's gonna make an exact duplicate. In fact, when I open up the box, it says I'm gonna copy your document. So right here, I need to, of course, type in the new name. I'm just gonna call it work proposal dash B. And then I'm gonna go in and see the default save location for this new copy document is my drive, which is part of my Google Drive. I can actually click right on it and it will let me see all the different locations, including a local location where I could save the file. Instead though, next to my drive, I'm gonna go in and select the folder that I have created there. Now, if you don't have a folder, let me show you how easy it is to create one. Come down here to the bottom left-hand corner, click on this little folder with a plus sign. Your new folder will come up. You can give it a name. I'm just gonna call this proposals. And once it's been created, I can go ahead and click on it. It'll be again selected, but to make sure that my new copy document will be placed inside of it, I'm gonna click on select again. So now I see the name of my new copied document that it'll be in the proposals folder, and then I can click on okay. Now it will open up the new copy in its own separate browser tab just to show me that it's there. And I can always come up here and notice I even have the opportunity to move the file to a different folder again. Or if I star it, it will add it to my starred or favorited documents when I go in to open up new files and make it easier to find. So it's a cool trick in Google Docs. Try it out. Hey everybody, this next topic is so simple to do, but we got to talk about it because when you're working with a web application like Google Docs, sometimes people don't understand that when it's time to be done and close your documents, you don't actually have to worry about going to file and close or clicking on a close button in the top right hand corner, because remember that everything is saving as we go to your cloud storage. That's all part of your Google account. So when you're ready to close out of your Google Docs, all you do is go up and actually close the browser tab and you're done. Everything is saving as we go. And that's why when you go to file, there is literally no close option because everything's working in a web browser. The only thing that can impact this is the, again, speed of your internet connection. But with Google Docs, all you do to shut down is click on the X for the browser tab and everything is finished. Hey, welcome back. We wanna talk about a really important feature of your Google account that is a huge part of how Google Docs works. Now, right now in Google Docs, I just have my Google Docs open like I'm ready to create a new blank Google Docs document. What we wanna talk about is where your files actually get stored by default through your Google account and also when you use Google Docs and any of the other web-based applications that are part of your Google account. It's a thing called Google Drive. 
Now, if you haven't used cloud storage before, there are a lot of other cloud storage tools available like OneDrive, OneDrive for Business, Dropbox, Box. There are many of them. But the great thing about Google Drive is that it's part of your Google account. Now, every Google account as of right now starts out with 15 gigabytes of free storage space that gets shared across your Google Drive, your Gmail, and your Google Photos. You can also upgrade, but it costs money. But to start with, you get those 15 gigabytes for free. Now, from inside Google Docs, you can actually see your Google Drive. What you're going to want to do is come up to the top left-hand corner where you're going to see a navigation to the main menu of Google Docs. When you click on this, it actually takes you into the main menu for your Google account, where you can actually go to some of the other software apps, including Google Sheets, Google Slides, and Google Forms. And then notice what's down here at the bottom. Good old Google Drive. When you click on this, it's going to take you into your Google Drive account. This is cloud storage, which means all your files are stored in the cloud. Now, it's interesting here when I go to my Google Drive, I'll see that it's actually allocated as my drive. That's like your default save location in your Google Drive account. Then you're going to see recent or different suggested files that you've worked on and then the folders that you may have created. And remember that this isn't just Google Docs file types that can go in here. It's basically anything that you want to store in the cloud from video files to photographs to Google Docs. So the great thing about cloud storage is it gives you access to your files from wherever you go because to get to my Google Drive, all I do is log into my Google account and not only do I have access to Google Docs, I also have access to Google Drive. So let's just again drive that home. I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the tab for my Google Doc. I'm gonna open up a new blank Google document. I'm gonna go ahead and just add three items to it. Now I wanna make sure this is saved. Notice in the top left-hand corner, it's already telling me it's been saved to my drive. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a name. I'm calling it Steps. I'm gonna hit Enter. Now you'll see right here that it's telling me that there's a cloud with a check mark. This means it has been saved to my Google Drive. And in fact, I'm gonna go ahead now and go back to the tab where the My Drive is still open, my Google Drive. And then I'm gonna go ahead and actually come in and refresh. And what I want you to see is the last thing that I just opened and was in is that Steps Google Doc. And if I click on it and reopen it again, because it'll open again in another browser tab. You can have your Google Docs open more than once. You'll see that the text I typed is there. So cloud storage is a fantastic way to keep track of stuff without having to drag USB drives or having to email yourself files. And Google Drive is definitely part of that journey. And it makes your use of Google Docs so much easier. So try it out. Hey, everybody. We're ready to look at how we can adjust our view inside of Google Docs. And again, it's fairly simple. So first of all, remember that you are in a web browser. So it's super easy to hold down your control key if you're on a Windows computer and use your scroll bar mouse wheel to help you, you know, zoom in and out. But as far as inside the application itself, first of all, on the toolbar, about sixth button in from the left, you have a zoom menu. This gives you the ability to zoom in and out based on about 50 to 200%. That will get me a lot close and personal. Also, there is an option at the very top called Fit. This is basically set up to make it readable and easy for you to see. But the default is always to have it at 100% when you first open Google Docs. The menu that helps to manage all this is the View drop-down menu. So if you come up into those drop-down menus and go to View, you'll see that a couple of options you have. One of them is to do things like turn on and off the ruler. So notice if I turn the ruler off, there's a lot less to see both vertically and horizontally within the window. Also, I can come in as well to the view drop-down menu. We'll turn the ruler back on. And at the very top, you'll see that right now I'm in what's called print layout mode. This is made to help me see the sides of the page. When I turn it off, it just basically turns off a few of the options on the sides, but it's gonna still look very similar to the mode that we've been in where I can see, for example, where the page starts and ends as far as printing. Now, I also have a full screen option when I go to that view drop-down ribbon. This is also super common. When you go to full screen mode, you'll notice that all the 
toolbars and the drop down menus at the top disappear, which is kind of nice. Notice here in the top left hand corner, I can also turn on what's called my work outline, which lets you see different styles that are in the document. Now to get out of this full screen view, you can hit the escape button on your keyboard that will take you out. But it's nice because it's kind of a fast way to see, again, the document without a lot of the extra stuff at the top and bottom. Now on a Windows PC, if you hit F11, it will actually take away the URL bar at the top of your browser. And this is kind of nice too, to make it look more like you're working inside of a software application that's installed locally on your device. And then if you hit F11 again, it will take it back so that you know you're working in a web app. Now remember that also under the view drop down menu, you're going to have a couple of other options like seeing an equation toolbar and even section breaks. These are again ways to help you more fully format your Google Doc. But again, just remember view drop down menu and then you've got your zoom in and zoom out using the little item on the toolbar. So try it out. The document we have open right now is called Work Proposal Updated. If you go to the Exercise Files folder, open up Work Proposal Updated A and try it out on your own. Hey, welcome back. I want to look at how I can add some headers and footers to a document in Google Docs. Now remember that headers, of course, go over the top of the text in your file and footers, of course, as the name implies, are always at the bottom. Well, first of all, let's get a file open. Right now I have company announcement open. If you go to the exercise files folder, you can open up company announcement A and add some headers and footers to it. It's in the exercise files. To locate the header and footers options in Google Docs, you wanna go up to the insert dropdown menu and come towards the bottom. You'll see here that it gives you two options, one to add a header and one to add a footer. So let's start with the header. It's very common to put things like names of the company, page numbers, dates, department names inside of headers. And you'll see very similar to other word processing applications, my header is here. And if I hit tab, it just allows me to move over from, again, the left side of the page to the right. If I do shift tab, it's going to continue to take me over. So I can use my arrow key to get back up and over to where I was. So right here, I'm just going to go ahead and type in, again, the name of the company. And then if I keep hitting tab, I can tab over to the right and I could, for example, put in the department. And of course, I need to remember that my name of, uh, again, the information I put up here will all print. Now, notice that my header area has opened up. If I want to go down to my footer, I'm just going to scroll down to the bottom of the page. And you'll see it's just showing me a header right now because I haven't yet turned the footer on. So to turn my footer on, I'm actually going to go back up to the insert drop down menu again and come back down to headers and footers and select footer. Now this opens up an area at the bottom of each page for my footer. Now in here, I'd like to put a page number. So this one requires me to go back up to the insert drop down menu again. And under headers and footers, you'll see that you have page numbers. In this box, it will show you that there are a few different options. You can have page numbers that appear at the, again, top in the header or not on the first page or vice versa down on the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and do mine on the bottom. And you'll notice that they're getting put in on the first page and also if I scroll down to the second page. So remember when it comes to inserting your headers and footers, you're gonna want to go up to the insert drop down menu and then select header and then select footer to get that information in there. And again, we want you to try it out. So go for it, open up a Google doc and try putting in some headers and footers. Hey, welcome back. I wanna take a Google doc that has a header and footer in it and make some adjustments. So first of all, notice that I do have a header right here at the top of my first page. And then if I scroll down to the bottom, I'll see I just have something as simple as a page number. Now, the first thing I would like to be able to do is actually open up my footer and actually put in a date next to this page number over on the right. So in order to do that, I'm gonna come up to the insert ribbon tab again and come down to headers and footers towards the bottom and select footer. You'll notice this highlights the bottom so that I can actually get into my footer area of my page. Normally, if I'm not in that footer area, I can click away from it. It will turn off. But if I come down here and actually click by double clicking on the footer, it will open up. So that's actually a shorter way than having to go up to the insert ribbon. But notice either one of them will do it. 
Now to add a page number, I'm actually going to tab over to the right until I get my mouse cursor blinking over on the right hand side, but not so far that I add a new line. Then I'm going to come up to the insert ribbon tab. And notice that towards the top, I actually have an option to insert the current date. You'll notice this allows me to pick from my computer's calendar so that I can actually put a date in. Now, if I've gone too far, I may need to hit my backspace key to get it back up so that it's not on a whole new line. So that's one thing that's a little bit more manual. When it comes to formatting your headers and footers, you're gonna do that like normal. So for example, if I want my page number or my date to be in bold, I'll highlight them and then I can do control B on my keyboard, for example, and that will change their color. Now, if I want to edit my header, I'm gonna come up here to the top again, and I'm gonna double click where my header is located and notice the header area will open up. Now, there are a few special options that you have when it comes to adjusting your headers and footers. Notice over here on the right, when I'm in my header, I actually have an options box that's popped up. When I click here, you'll notice that I can do different things like impact my header format, change my page numbering if there are any page numbers in here or remove the header out of the document. Let's check out the header format. This lets me decide how close to the top of the page my header is located and also my footer. Then additionally, notice that it's very common to have a different first page header. So maybe the header is different or it doesn't exist in the document. Or you can set up different headers and footers for even pages and odd pages. So say, for example, I want my top margin to actually be one inch for the header. I can apply that and you'll notice it moves it down. And additionally, if I want to just remove the header out of the document completely, I can click here and come in and say, remove header. This takes the header out, but notice my footer still exists. So as always, we'd love to have you try this out. Go into the exercise files folder and open up company announcement dash header and footer dash A and try editing the header and footer that are located in that Google doc. Hey everybody, I wanna be able to adjust the headers and footers of my Google Doc. So inside many word processing applications, including Google Documents, it's very common for the margins on your page to by default be one inch. In fact, look at the ruler here. Notice how again, my actual page or printed area begins at the one inch mark. Keep in mind if you have headers and footers, they will usually be within a quarter to half an inch from the edge of the page. And you can see here again how on the bottom, same thing. And if I look up here at the left and right, we can see that one inch coming into play. And again, most common page size is eight and a half by 11. Think about how many things we print are in eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper. Now to get into the area where you adjust margins, we're gonna go up to the file ribbon tab, come almost all the way down to the bottom to page setup. This is gonna open up the page setup dialog or window. Now notice, first of all, right here, this is pretty cool. You can pick whether you apply the changes to a specific section or the whole document. Also notice here that I can change to landscape. Let's try that out and see what that does. So now both my pages are set to print landscape or view landscape. You can see how different that looks. Let's go back to the file again, drop down menu and come to page setup and actually look at our margins. I wanna change my margins from one inch, like we've already looked at to half an inch. So I'm actually just gonna type in 0.5 in each one of these measurement areas. And notice over here on the left, it lets me see the different sizes of paper that I can do. And again, I can do things like legal if I need to, or even an executive size paper, but the default is always eight and a half by 11. I can also make this different change my default. This would override the default of always having one inch be your page size. And then I'm gonna click on okay. So I'm gonna now see that again, the print is now moving closer to the edges of the page. This is going to allow me to fit more on the page as you can see here. And again, I'm now seeing how my changes have taken effect. To change it back, I would go back to file and back down to page setup again. And then I could adjust everything back. For example, now I wanna go back to a portrait orientation. So when I click on okay, I can still see my half inch margins on the top, bottom, left and right but I am back to being, again, that eight and a half by 11 and portrait for my orientation. As always, we want you to try this out. So go into the exercise files folder, open up company margins dash A, and try setting up some different margins in your Google Doc. 
Hey, everybody, I want to put some columns into one of my Google Docs. Columns can be a great way to help really put together sections and also make uh, make a document look more visually exciting. So what I want to do is come into this document. It's called Destination Overview. In your exercise files folder, there's also a document just like this one called Destination Overview A. We'd love to have you try this out with. Now, first of all, I'm going to highlight the text that I would like to apply the columns to. For this, I'm going to come in and just, of course, left drag over the text. And then I'm actually going to come up to the format drop down menu and come to columns. And you'll see that I'm already at one column but I'd actually like to do two or three are the, the defaults that I can pick from. I'm gonna select two and notice how it automatically takes the text and puts it into two columns. But what's really great here is that the rest of the text stays one column. I wanna continue to go down to the other sections and do the same thing. Highlight the text, go back up to that format drop down menu, come to columns and pick two. Now, what if I wanna get really exciting and I'd like to do three columns. So with this final one, I'm gonna highlight the last uh, section in the document, everything uh, below the North Shore Travel ranked as top travel agency section. I'm gonna go up to the format drop down menu and come down to columns. And this time I'm gonna do three. I know we're getting pretty exciting here. And I'll actually put the heading down on the top of the next page just so you can see what that looks like. But again, everything else does not adjust. Now, how would I undo that or say, how would I go from three to two columns? Well, of course, I could click on my undo button or I can highlight again the paragraphs that I applied the columns to. I can come back up here to format and I can automatically just switch it by selecting two columns instead of three. And that will automatically update it. But what if I'd also like to impact the format of my columns? For this, I'm going to go back up to the top section. I'm again going to highlight the, the uh, paragraphs where I applied my columns, go back up to the format drop down menu, come to columns, and notice that under the bottom of the default options, I have a more options. This will actually take me into a simple dialog or window that controls my Google Docs column options. First of all, notice I can pick how many columns I have. I can also add a line between the columns. And then right here, Let's say I want less space between my columns. So instead of a half an inch, I'm gonna to go to a quarter inch or 0.25. I'm gonna apply that. Now I can actually see what it looks like. And notice this looks pretty good. So again, if I want to copy that down to my other columns, if I'm going to be doing it through the format drop down menu, I'm just gonna reselect the text, go back up to format, go to columns, go down to more options. Notice right here, I'm just going to continue to say, hey, I want two columns. I want a line between them and I'm going to put it a quarter inch. You can see here how it's applied that. And I could continue to do that to the bottom as well. But just remember, columns are a great way to add visual appeal to a document and also make it easier for, again, someone who's reading it to keep certain types of information together. We'd love to have you try it out. So go to the exercise files folder, open up destination overview A and give it a whirl. Hi, welcome back. We want to take a Google Doc and be able to put a column break in that Google Doc wherever we'd like. So right now I have a uh, Google Doc open that has some columns in it. It's called Destination Columns. And I want to be able to adjust where some of these columns are breaking apart. Maybe because I don't want two columns, for example, to be broken across multiple columns or pages. So to do this, obviously you need a document that has columns in it, and then you need to select where you want your column break to occur. So for example, right here, I'd actually like the column break to happen so that this particular paragraph is not getting cut across columns. To do this, I'm going to come up to the format ribbon, and you'll notice if I come down to columns, this will give me the ability to change it back from two columns to one, but that's actually not what I want. I want a column break. So clicking back again where I want my column break to go, I'm actually gonna come up to the insert drop-down menu and come down to break. It's important though that you pick the correct type of break. I want a column break. What you'll see this will do is it will just, instead of putting in, for example, a page break, it's now put in a column break so that this particular paragraph doesn't get cut across columns. So let's try that one more time. I wanna take this paragraph right here and I wanna put it at the top of the next column. So I'm going to go back up to insert, 
come down to break and then select column break. And again, you can see how it's just, again, putting those, those particular columns so that they are not being broken across the column breaks that are already there. Now, if I've put in a column break and I want to undo it, I can always click at the top of one column, hit my backspace key, and notice that will allow me to actually undo a column break. But the steps to put the column break in are going to actually just be click where you want the column break to go, go up to the insert drop down menu, come down to break and pick column break. You'll notice that's what will allow you to have those columns be broken across so that you are determining where that's happening and not, not just good old Google Docs. We want you to try this out. So go into the exercise files folder, look for destination columns dash A, open it up. It has columns in it and play with adjusting and putting in some column breaks of your own. Hey everybody, I wanna add some page breaks to my Google Doc. So I have a Google Doc open, and you know normally page breaks are going to occur wherever Google Docs needs to add them. In fact, you can see here that sometimes they're kinda of awkward. For example, this uh, heading here is separated from its columns by a page break that I didn't put in, Google Docs did. So to help again adjust it and make it so it's not so awkward, we wanna put some page breaks in of our own. So the first step is to actually click in front of the text that you would like to have put down on the next page. Then I'm gonna come up to the insert drop down menu and come down to break. Notice how many different kinds of breaks there are. You've got page breaks, column breaks, and section breaks. So all we're gonna do here is select or left click on page break. Notice everything gets pushed down to the next page. And this way my heading and my paragraphs or my columns aren't getting separated. Now, another great way to do this is to click in front of the text and rather than having to go up to the insert drop down menu on my keyboard, I can hit shift and enter. This is a PC keyboard shortcut and it automatically puts in a page break for me. So you can either insert your page breaks or you can do the control enter keyboard shortcut. Now here's the next big question. How do you remove a page break if you put one in? Well, you're gonna go back and click again in front of the text that you want to have be up on the previous page and then hit your backspace key and it will automatically remove the page breakout. But I love the, sh the control enter keyboard shortcut to put in a page break where you want it to go because it's a really fast way to help make sure that you can separate those page breaks the way you would like them to be separated. Now, as always, we'd love to have you try this out. So go into the exercise files folder and look for the Google doc called page breaks a, open it up and try putting in some page breaks of your own. Hey everybody, welcome back. I wanna look at a really simple thing, but it's important and that's being able to increase and decrease indent within Google Docs. So for this, I just have any Google Docs document open. I'm gonna come in and click by the paragraph that I would like to increase the indent for. And then I'm gonna come up to my toolbar. And on the right hand side, almost towards the very far right, you're gonna see a decrease indent button and an increase indent button. They both have arrows with lines next to them. Now the increase indent, as you can see here, will in increments of half an inch increase the indent for that one paragraph. The decrease indent does it exactly the opposite. It undoes the increase. Now you can actually select multiple paragraphs and then click on, for example, the increase indent and you'll notice that it will increase all of those paragraphs together. So you can actually go through an entire document and just use this to help nudge over multiple paragraphs all at the same time, just knowing that the default is for it to be half an inch. Now remember, if you look up at your ruler, you can see again how it's moving over both the first line indent and also underneath, you have that left indent that we've talked about in previous sessions. This is just again, another option is again to just drag this over and you can actually also use this as a way to increase the indent for specific lines. Remembering that the bar is for the first line in a paragraph and of course the upside down triangle is going to be for all additional lines. These three are all separate paragraphs. And then again, I could use the decrease indent to bump everything back over again. Remembering though that now that's my default. So if I want them to bump all the way back over to the left, I need to drag them back. Again, we want you to try this out. So open up any document in Google Docs, 
that's in the exercise files folder and try using increase indent and decrease indent to again impact how those paragraphs and lines look. Hey everybody, let's explore adding tab stops to Google Docs. Now, first of all, why tab stops? Tab stops give you a lot more control over the horizontal placement of text in a document. Now, by default, we've already seen that tabs are done in half inch increments horizontally, but we also know that we can add personalized tab stops ourselves by adding them to the ruler. So you can change that half inch default. Also, you can have more than one tab stop on a line. Now, there are three kinds of tab stops. There's the left tab stop that aligns text at the tab stop to the left, center that centers text around the tab stop, and then right tab stop. Now, for any of these, you need to have your ruler turned on. So let's first of all make sure that's in place. Up here, I'm going to go to the view drop down menu and just make sure there's a check mark next to my show ruler option. If I click on that ruler, it's going to turn it off. So make sure you keep the check mark next to it because you need your ruler turned on for this to work. Additionally, remember that we have our first line indent marker and also our left indent that already represents where our paragraphs are going to begin. Now I have the file called agent meeting schedule open. Remember in your exercise files folder, if you go in there and you find agent meeting schedule a, it'll give you the same file so that you can try this out as well. I'm going to come down to this set of, again, separate lines that are really paragraphs because there's an enter at the end of each line and select those. Now for me to create a tab stop at the one and one half inch mark, I'm going to come up to the ruler and actually left click on it. This is pretty cool because you'll actually see the three types of tab stops I already mentioned, the add left tab stop, add center, and add right. I'm just gonna left click on the add left tab stop option, and notice that in my ruler, I get an arrow that points to the left, indicate this is a left tab stop. Now, while those three lines are still selected, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit my tab. You'll notice that eventually it's gonna get me over to the tab stop I just created. Also, it does move my again, first line indent because these are all single lines. Now we're gonna come down and do a centered tap stop. So to the next set of three separate lines, I'm gonna highlight them. And this time I'm gonna go to the three inch mark and I'm actually gonna click again on the ruler and select add a center tap stop. Now notice for my center tab stop, it's a diamond. So you can see that each tab stop has a different look. So you know the type that it is. And then I'm gonna hit the enter button until again, I see my text get to that centered tab stop. And you can see how once I get it there, it's centering at that point where the tab stop is. Again, notice what it's doing to the first line indent because these are also the first lines. Now, what does a right tab stop look like? Well, I'm gonna scroll down a little bit more and highlight again the next set of three separate lines. And this time I'm gonna come over to about the five inch mark and click on the ruler and do an add right tab stop. A right tab stop looks like an arrow pointing to the left, just like you can see here. Then I'm again going to hit my tab button until I get that set of text over by that tab stop. You can see what happens here is I'm getting again the right align tab stop. And so now we've explored the three different ones. So again, we want you to try this out. So go to the exercise files folder, open up one of the files and try adding some tab stops of your own. Hey everybody, welcome back. What if you have a document that does have tab stops in it and you need to get rid of those tab stops? First of all, let's just remember what tab stops look like inside of a document. I'm actually gonna come up and just zoom out a little bit on this doc to make it a little bit easier to see where tab stops are located. First of all, you're only gonna see tab stops indicated on your horizontal ruler. So make sure your ruler is on up here and then go to the paragraphs where you'd like to try to see where your tab stops are. Highlight the paragraphs and actually right up here, I can see a tab stop lurking behind my left and first line indent marker. If I come to it, I can actually left drag it. I don't know if you just saw that and remove it from my ruler. And by doing this, it's gonna allow me now to just rely again on my first line indent and then also my left indent to just move those things over however I'd like them. Keeping in mind that if I take the bar too far, it's going to actually move it off the page. Same thing down here. Remember, this is a centered tab stop. On this one, I'm going to see a diamond. I can left drag it off. It doesn't take the text back, but then 
I can actually drag both my first line indent and my left line indent back over to the far left and it will undo the existing tab stop. Same right here with my right facing tab stop. It's gonna look like, and you can't see it very well because again, those are covering it up. But if I move them over a little bit, you can see it, I'll left drag it off. And then again, I can come right here to my left tab stop, my left indent, and just drag it back over to the far left and undo it. So you're literally removing them from the ruler by left dragging them off. We want you to try this out. So in the exercise files folder, go in and open up agent meeting tab stops remove dash A. Practice taking them out so that you can see how easy it is. Welcome back. We're ready to talk about spell check and proofing tools. Now, there are different ways to go about this. Right now, I have a, a Google Doc open called Seminar Schedule. And if you're itching at all the spelling mistakes and gram grammatical errors inside of it, that's on purpose. So first of all, let's talk about where you can go to activate the proofing tools. On your toolbar, you're going to see a capital letter A in the top left-hand corner with a check mark. This is going to be your shortcut to open up your spelling and grammar check. But before we actually initiate one, I want to talk about just the autocorrect that's turned on. You're going to see throughout my, my Google Doc that I have some red underlines and some blue underlines. And this is where the spell and the autocorrect for grammar are turned on automatically. So how do I do these? Well, first of all, if you hover over the top of any of these red or blue underlines and right click, you'll see that you automatically get options to help fix this. In this case, it's trying to do an update to the spelling. Notice it can even give me, again, feedback on the suggestion, or down here, you notice that it will always correct it, or I can add that misspelled word to my dictionary, scary, but yes, that's an option, or initiate a full-blown spelling and grammar check. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and just update it to the one word, now, if I come down here to the blue, same thing, I'm going to right click. Notice if I left click, it just gives me a quick answer. You'll notice right here that it's actually corrected the grammar in this case. So it's helping me not only with my spelling, but with my grammar too. Now, if I initiate something to help me with the proofing tools, I can come up here and use the capital letter A check mark button that will open up my spelling and grammar check or up in the ribbon. I shouldn't say ribbon, but the drop down menus, I can go to tools and you'll see that spelling and grammar are at the top. Notice here it's turned on right now with check marks to show both spelling suggestions and grammar suggestions. If I uncheck either of these, those auto spelling and grammar corrections will turn off. Now to initiate the spelling and grammar check, I'm going to click here and now it's going to take me word for word through the document and notice I can either accept or I can come to a word and I can ignore it, right? And this is just gonna take me through the entire document until it has fixed all of my spelling and grammar errors. Notice right here on the corner that I have more options and you'll see here how it's telling me how many times it's found this or I've ignored this in the document or giving me an option to add it to my dictionary. But again, this is really going just like spell check, going through the document to help me fix and both do spelling and grammar errors at the same time until it gets back to the very beginning. Now this one, I probably want to ignore, right? And once it's done, it tells me. Now, as always, we'd love to have you try this out. So go into the exercise files, open up seminar schedule dash A and try out doing both a spelling and grammar check on your own. Welcome back, everybody. I want to talk about a pretty cool feature inside of Google Docs, and it's this idea that you can create your own dictionary. It's called the personal dictionary. This is an addition to the dictionary that comes with Google Docs. Now, for example, if I come in and I select a word, I can actually right click on that word. And you'll notice here that it will allow me to open up the Webster version of the dictionary. I'm teasing with that, but this is like a traditional dictionary where if I click on define, it'll actually open that dictionary up. This is not the dictionary I'm talking about, but yes, it is very useful and I can close this. What I'm talking about is a dictionary of words that you create create that follows your Google account. And it's pretty cool because you can basically create your own dictionary of words that you might use. 
So for example, we can see in this document that's called personal dictionary, by the way, and as always, you can go into the exercise files folder and open up personal dictionary a and try this out that I have a couple of misspelled words. You can see that if I come to any of these words and left click, it gives me options to just update the word immediately, ignore it, or I can come right here to more options and this will take me to my spelling and grammar check which is where I want to go. Because from here, I can see again that it's already telling me it will fix this word. I can ignore it or accept it. But notice right here, if I click on these three dots, that it will actually take me to my personal dictionary and let me see it, where the misspelled word will be added for me. But this is a list of the different words that I've already added to my personal dictionary. I'm going to go ahead at this point and fix the word that's suggested for me. And now I'm going to come down to my next one. With this one, I'm going to right click. Now by right clicking, you'll notice again that it means, ah, is this the word that you want? Or what I can do is correct it. But now what I wanna do is I'm actually going to highlight it with my mouse and then I'm going to right click on it again. And notice again, now it's saying, hey, you can go ahead and define this. You can explore it. But notice also, if I want to, I can actually select the word copy it, and then actually go up to my spell check button. I can come in and notice how it's taking me through the spell check, telling me that everything's great. But if I go back again and come to it, this time I'm actually going to come down to the options and go to my personal dictionary. I can paste that word in. You'll notice I already added it, but if I add it again, it's already here, but if I'd added it again, it would add it in so that I can use it in the future. And this means that if I ever do need to use this word in a document, it'll be here and it will follow me wherever I go. Now, as always, we wanted to try this out. So open up a Google Doc or open up Personal Dictionary A from, again, the Exercise Files folder and try to add some words to the Personal Dictionary that you might want to use in the future. Welcome back, everybody. I want to look at how I can control some of those autocorrect options that we've been exploring inside of Google Docs. There is actually an area inside of the application where you can look at the settings and also change them. So for that, I just have any document open in Google Docs, and I'm actually going to come up to the Tools menu, to the Tools drop-down menu, and almost all the way down to the very bottom is Preferences. This is where you go to see what the preferences for your autocorrect are, and also for the autocorrect words that are in your autocorrect dictionary. So if you notice here, we see check marks next to everything that's going to be auto-detect. For example, it will automatically capitalize words that it thinks should be automatically capitalized capitalized. And we know that the spell check is automatically turned on. Now, next to that, you'll see that we have substitutions. If I come here, I'm going to see where I can type one thing and it will replace another. For example, if I type the word about, I can actually have it be corrected with the word about like this. And notice I can actually add it into the dictionary. So once it's been added into my autocorrect or what's called substitutions, if I come into the document and I type in the word about, A-B-B-O-U-T, and then I hit enter, you'll notice it's automatically been fixed and capitalized. So you can actually make your own additions to the autocorrect dictionary. Again, you can also take them out. So if I go back up to tools again, come back down to preferences, and again, go to that substitutions tab, and I just start typing in the A-B-B-O-U-T, it'll actually take me to where that is in my dictionary. Notice it's just found it. And I can actually remove any of these that are in my autocorrect dictionary just by clicking on this X on the side, that will remove them out. And this is a way that you can, again, create fast ways to add words that you type a lot in, or again, customize the autocorrect with options that are more helpful for you. We'd love to have you try it out. So open up even a new blank document and check those options out under the tools drop down menu. 
Howdy, everybody. Welcome back. I want to look at how you can find and replace text inside of Google Docs. Now, first of all, the find and replace menu, or actually the find menu, is right here under the edit drop down menu. You'll see if you go all the way to the bottom, you have find and replace. This will open up the find and replace box. There's also some great shortcuts for find and replace. If I just do control F, as in control find on my keyboard, you'll see that it automatically opens up the find box and then see this vertical ellipses on the right hand side. If I click on this, it will take me to the find and replace box. The other way to get directly to the find and replace is to do control H. That will also open up the box. Now let's just explore find first. I'm gonna do control F again. I need to find anywhere where the word tour has been used in my document. It's super great because the minute you type it in, notice it's already telling you how many times that word is in the document and it highlights them really quickly. And you can quickly jump to each one. Notice how they're a little bit darker in color as you arrow to them and it automatically takes them to you, takes you to them, I should say. And notice even up here where I have the word tours, it still selects the word even if it's just part of a word. Now, let's say that I want to change the word tour to field trip. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually come to the vertical ellipses, click on it, and it's going to open up the find and replace box. Right here, I'm going to go ahead and again, change it to the word that I would like. Now below, notice that I have options to match case on this. That would mean, is it uppercase or lowercase? And then also, do I want to match regular expressions? Now to get it to start looking, I can actually click on next. This will find the first word. And I know it's kind of hard to see back here, but you can actually left drag the box out of the way. You're going to see that it's this one that's actually selected. To just do a single replace, I'm gonna click on replace and just that one word will get replaced. And notice I could just go through the document word by word. If I'm in a hurry and I just want to replace all of them, I can say replace all and it replaces all of them until they're totally again updated. So this is a really powerful, fast way to fix any type of for example, misspelling of a word that's not in the dictionary or to update wording. And it's something that's not new, but super useful. We'd love to have you try this out. So open up seminar replace dash a from the exercise files folder and try doing a find and replace within it. Welcome back. I want to look at how I can create a new Google Doc based on one of the Google templates. Now, just to review on what a template is, it's basically like a stamp for a Google Doc. Something like, for example, a letter or a resume where they give you the basic format and then you customize it with your own information. There are templates within the Google account that you can access. To get to them, we need to go to your main screen for Google Docs. To do that, I'm going to come to the top left-hand corner. Notice right now I just have an untitled Google Doc open and go to my Docs homepage. And you'll see here that not only do I see the blank Google Doc that we've used so much, but also some of the other templates that are in here, everything from resumes to even a project proposal. And as I come down, I'll even see some documents that I've recently opened. Notice right here that I also can actually come in and see a list view, but at the top, this is the template gallery. This is actually what I want to look at. And you'll notice here that I can actually sort through these and actually see the template uh, library right here and go down. I'm going to go ahead and pick the Spearmint letter template and double click on it. This will actually open it up and allow me to base my new file on the template that's provided by, in this case, Google Docs. Now, where does it save? It's just called letter and it's automatically going to be saved to my, again, Google Drive. I can rename it by just coming up here. I'm going to type in a letter dash A and it will automatically save it to my Google Drive. And then all I have to do is come in and start typing in my information over the top. You can see that as I do this, it just replaces the text with my own information. And again, if you look at it, you'll see that in the middle, it's the gobbledygook that it creates here. So you will definitely need to put in your own information over the top. But now I've created a new Google Doc based on a template. Again, we'd love to have you try this out. So go in and open up again, a new Google doc based on one of Google's templates. 
Hey everybody, welcome back. I wanna show you a quick trick. When you do have an existing Google template that you use a lot and you're just in a blank document, this is just a fast way to get another new Google Doc based on a specific template. So up here, I'm actually gonna to come to File, like I would if I was saving or even printing the document I currently have open. And then I'm gonna come down to New, and notice that I can create a new blank document, or I can actually select to have my Google Doc based on a template. So I'm gonna pick From Template, it brings me into the template gallery where I can select the template I want to use. And now my new document, once it opens up, will be based on that template. Again, remember, it'll have the same name as the Google template, so I'll need to customize that if I want. And it's not a template, it's just, again, a normal Google Doc. But this is a good way to jump start starting a new document out in Google Docs if you know it's going to be based on an existing template. Love to have you try it out. So just open up a new blank, again, Google Doc, and then go into File, come into New, but select from Template, and then pick one of those templates and have your new Google Doc be based on that. Hi, everybody. I want to print one of my Google Docs. Again, very simple to do. Just want to make sure you have the correct file open. So I have my business proposal file open. Remember in the exercise files folder, if you wanna try it out with this same document, go to business proposal A in the exercise files. Now from here, notice I do have a print shortcut button in my, again, toolbar that I can click on that will take me to, again, my print preview and my print box. I can also do control P on my keyboard. This is a really common shortcut to do print. And if you want the long way around the block, you can go to file and then down to print. And sometimes you have to scroll down just a little bit to see it because it's clear at the bottom. Now these all take you to your print dialog box and it's very simple. You'll notice here in the bottom left that you do have the ability to kind of fit it so that you see the page up close. There's also a zoom in and a zoom out that really let you zoom in and zoom out, but it's, it's very simple. And if there's more than one page, you're gonna need to scroll down to see those additional pages. Also, if you look up here, you can actually save it to a PDF or to your printer. You can pick which pages will print. If I do custom notice here, I can actually say just page one. I can also decide if it's gonna print in black and white or color. And then notice under here, I have more settings, including the page size, how many sheets will print per page, Notice this would allow me to print more than one per page and also the scaling of the document. So do I wanna fit it to the paper? In this case, it is already on eight and a half by 11. But you can see how these will probably be determined partially by your printer. Also right here, you'll see that you do have a print using the system dialog options. But again, fairly simple in how it prints and part of these options will depend on what you're printing to. But as soon as you hit print, it's gonna print and be ready to go on your way. So we'd love to have you try this out. Open up business proposal A out of the exercise files and try to go into the print dialog box and practice using some of the options. And if you really don't print it, that's okay, but at least we want you to try it out and see how easy it is to print something from Google Docs. Hey everybody, I need to send an email for my Google Doc. Is there a way to do that quickly without having to open up Outlook or Gmail and send it through one of the email applications? Well, good news is there is a way to do it. So open up any Google Doc. I have my business proposal file open here and I'm gonna come up here to the file ribbon tab, click on it and I'm gonna come down to email. You'll notice right here that I have an option that says email this file. When I click on this option, it's gonna take me into the email box. And notice at the top, I can send this file to myself. This will give me a copy of it. Then I'm gonna type in again, the email address, it has to be the real thing that I want to send it to. I type in again, and it will recognize it if it's real. The subject line is the title of my file and then a message. Now notice down here, I get to pick the file type. Am I going to be sending it as a PDF, as a Word doc? maybe as an open document. These are all common, again, uh, formats. I'm gonna go ahead and send this as a Microsoft Word doc. 
Notice in this case, I can either include it in the email or I can keep it as an attachment. I want it to be an attachment, so I'm not going to check this box off. And then I'm going to click on send. So this will make sure that it's sent as an attachment and it will send me a copy as well. And again, I'm emailing it directly from Google Docs, so I don't have to take the time to open up my email application and then attach it that way because that can take forever. So try it out. Open up any Google Doc, go to file, click on email, and try emailing that file even to yourself just so you can see how easy it is to do with inside the application. Hello, everybody. What if you have a Google Doc that you need to make available to a large audience so that everybody can see it and you can control the updates as they're released to the public? Well, a great way to do this is to publish your Google Doc. This works the same way in Google Sheets and also Slides, but it's a great way to not have to email the file to people or share it with them. You're just publishing it, basically making it into a website. To do this, we're gonna have the file open so in this case, I have my business proposal file open. And remember, you can go to the exercise files and open up business proposal A and try this out. Now for the publish option, we're going to go to the file drop down menu and come down and you'll notice as you go down in the menu towards the bottom, you have an option that says publish to the web. When you do this, you'll notice here that it allows you to pick uh, again, if you're creating a link to the document or if you're going to embed it, you can pick either one. I'm going to do the link. Notice down here, you also have the settings for how it will be published. You'll notice that when changes are made, it will automatically update it so that people can see those changes, but they will not be able to change it themselves. They'll just be able to see it. Then I'm going to click on start publishing. You'll see here, it tells me that my document is going to be published. Notice right here out creates this link and it's even giving me links where I could share it with someone through either Facebook, Twitter, or Gmail. I'm gonna go ahead and click, for example, on Gmail and you'll notice it actually is going to take me in, open up my Gmail here and give me that link inside of it that I could then email to someone. Notice now that it's been published, I can actually take this link and all I have to do is select it and then do control C to copy it. If I come in, I can click on it paste it in and it will actually take people to the document. But notice it's not going to be one that they can update. It's just one that they can see. So it's a great way to share content with people, but it's not content they can edit. I'm gonna close that. And notice if I come back into the document, I can close this publish to web box. But if I ever need to get back into those settings again, I can go to file, down to publish to web, it takes me back into that same box where I created the publishing in the first place. And if I decide that I want to disable the publishing, I can say stop publishing. Notice this will tell me again, I'm gonna stop making this document available for others to view through that link. I'm basically turning it off and now it will not be published anymore. Fantastic way to share a Google Doc with a wide audience. Check it out, go into your own Google Doc and try to publish it. Hey everybody, we really appreciate you joining us for this journey in learning as a beginner how to use Google Docs. We've also explored Google Drive and all the great features that this really simple but very powerful web application can offer. As always, we'd love to have you try everything out, so don't forget to check out the exercise files and try using Google Docs on your own. You're gonna be amazed at how easy it is. Thanks for watching. Don't forget we also offer live classes in office applications, professional development, and private training. Visit LearnIt.com for more details. Please remember to like and subscribe and let us know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for choosing LearnIt.